Hello and good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jackson Root. I'm a content marketing manager at D10, and we have an amazing session lined up for you today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So today we're talking about connected classrooms and hybrid learning. So um, as I mentioned a minute ago, my name is Jackson Root. I'm part of the marketing team here at D10, um, and I'm joined today by Scott Krickerberg, our head of strategic alliances. And we have a very special guest today, uh, Philippe Penal from Zoom, um, is going to be walking us through their classroom and, and connected learning spaces at Zoom HQ. So this is an amazing live tour we're going to go through. So as we walk through these spaces in a minute, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to direct them to the Q&A. Um, we'll let Philippe know that there's questions uh, to address, and we'll address them live. Um, others will save at the end, depending on the complexity of the question and what we're covering. So, excuse me, before we get started, um, Philippe, did you want to say uh, a few words to everybody who's joining in at the webinar this morning? Yeah, no, very happy to be here with the D10. Uh, you guys are in for a great experience here at Zoom headquarters where we're going to walk you through uh, a point of view tour, uh, a very immersive experience as to what is possible with Zoom and D10, uh, with the Zoom Room product and how we're enabling many different spaces, uh, as well as what we're doing with educational uh, facilities across the United States and across the world uh, with the platform as well as D10. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll turn it over to the D10 folks and uh, we'll be right in in order to do this live tour uh, for your team. As uh, Jackson mentioned, any questions, I don't have any visibility to the meeting as I get, I get on with the tour. Feel free to put those on chat so Jackson can go ahead and open the mic and uh, ask the questions so that way we can make sure that, that we address your comments or questions uh, live. Excellent. Thanks, Philippe. Yeah, so um, our agenda today, we're going to talk about some of the fundamentals to consider when creating the ideal classroom. Um, connected classroom, excuse me. We're then going to jump right into the live tour. So we're going to cut to Philippe and his team. And we're going to see a lot of the spaces that they have set up there um, in their virtual tour space. Depending on time, we're going to jump into some of our case studies and talk about some of the new technology that we have coming from D10. Um, and then we're going to save some time for Q&A and also have an opportunity for you um, if you've been wanting to try D10 technology, a very easy way to engage with us directly um, and get a free trial going in your space. So let's talk briefly uh, some of the fundamentals that, that we talk to a lot of educators about when they are, are planning to create the ideal hybrid classroom and connected learning space. So going into specking out these spaces, deciding which kind of technology to deploy, there's, there's really this, this main, um, we call it the IT imperative, which is you need to be deploying technology that facilitates collaboration and communication. Um, while supporting teachers to deliver more impactful instruction than, in, than if you're in the classroom or if you were just remote tuning in. Um, of course, IT teams are responsible for ensuring positive learning outcomes and student development. And of course, it's, it's critically important that folks can teach to anywhere and from anywhere. So whether folks um, and faculty are at home, whether they're in the classroom, some kind of a hybrid between the two, um, of course, students as well are tuning in from all over. So you know, this is really the big challenge that I think many of you are facing, and we recognize that. So all of the, the solutions that we're going to walk through today um, are developed in, in mind to help facilitate this, the IT challenge as we refer to it. So at D10, um, what's, what's core to the way that we design solutions is that, for, first and foremost, it has to be simple to use. Um, if folks can't go right up to the board and just turn it on and use it, um, then we didn't do a very good job designing the system. Has to be hassle-free, has to be able to set up in a snap. Um, a lot of this, you know, these are comments that we get from a lot of educators that we talk to that, that really prefer solutions like some of the D10 stuff that we're gonna walk through today because it allows faculty to just walk right into it and use it the way they've been using their traditional whiteboards and chalkboards. Um, it gives them that flexibility, right? So it's not only is it flexible for faculty, but it's very flexible for IT administrators, for, for AV um, teams to remotely control it, remotely manage, remotely maintain devices, um, also adapt it, right? All of our solutions are very scalable. We have um, some things we're gonna talk about later today, which allows you to take some of our um, larger systems and add additional cameras onto them very easily and just make that 
uh, a more suitable solution for a larger space or any of your kind of skinnier, wider, narrow. See some of these spaces that you might be um, updating for connected learning that traditionally may have been kind of a funny, long, skinny spot. You now have a lot of options available to you to make those spaces easy to use. And of course, it has to be powerful, right? If the cameras can't catch somebody 30 feet away, um, it's not going to be a very good experience for your far end attendees, for students that are tuning in from home or a faculty that might be joining remotely. Um, the audio has to be um, has to be uh, widely covering everybody in the room. And of course, the the actual touch screen, the intuitive technology that's built into, you know, allowing you to collaborate with whiteboarding, which we'll see in a minute. It has to be very powerful. It has to be smooth. It has to be seamless. It can't be laggy. It can't be glitchy. Right. And these are all the things that we bake into the technology that we're going to talk about today. So Zoom and D10, um, Philippe, you mentioned this briefly, but we make hybrid learning easy. Uh, this is something that D10 was really developed initially for Zoom rooms and Zoom um, to be very easy technology component to a Zoom rooms. So um, just like all the all of the the factors we talked about a second ago, right? It has to be very easy. It has to uh, foster this culture of collaboration. Has to allow students to connect eye to eye, uh, and it has to enable these in, these rich lesson plans with live annotation, which we're going to see in a minute, and digital whiteboarding. This all has to be very easy to use. Has to be very intuitive and just feel very natural. So with that, we're going to cut to Philippe in a minute. Here, he's going to walk us through some of the spaces at Zoom HQ. Um, and I just want to encourage you, if you have any questions at all, please drop them in the Q&A function. So um, just as a best practice with most webinars you attend to these days, the chat is disabled. Um, we're really encouraging you to use Q&A. It allows us just to make sure that any comments or questions that you have are very um, are targeted very, very uh, as we go through the webinar. Excuse me, tongue tied. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, and Philippe, we'll cut to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jackson, and uh, to all of you, um, Felipe Henao again. I'm a Zoom room specialist for the Western United States, so I support all our account executives from the Mississippi West all the way to the island. And my job function here at Zoom is to bring the Zoom experience into a physical space uh, using devices uh, like D10, uh, D10 being one of our premier partners uh, with their all-in-one touch devices, which we use across uh, all our floors here at Zoom, as well as we propose uh, the use of them uh, to a lot of our customers. So uh, let's just get us started. So one of the things that I want to preempt is that you guys are going to see multiple different applications of Zoom rooms in different settings and things that you can uh, that you can uh, put into into work and and, and, and install and implement uh, in different areas in your universities and uh, in schools uh, to do multiple different things. So the, where we get started really is with our virtual receptionist, which is a one button to push experience. We're seeing the deployment of this uh, across many universities in order to extend the reach uh, for the admin building into multiple different locations on campus uh, for the students to ask questions about financial aid, about enrollment, about admissions, uh, what's happening where perhaps if they want counseling. Uh, so the whole idea is to make that, uh, that experience frictionless and for the, those end users to just have one, one place to go and uh, you know, reach out to different resources in your institutions. So here we have a D10 me. This is a 27 inch uh, all in one uh, for touch uh, unit, more of a personal unit. It's got a 4K camera, micro ray speakers, all built in into the same chassis. Uh, so, very, very good, uh, very, and, and, and an awesome uh, price. Uh, this is something where Jackson and the D10 uh, team can uh, work with you guys uh, on cost, but uh, very accessible and easy to scale and deploy and massive needed. Uh, so, uh, for those that, that are looking to, again, extend the reach and offer different services uh, on a one button to push, we can now, as you guys can see, we can customize for two experiences. We'll go into the second one in a minute. We now have the ability to load different uh, uh, people and different, uh, you know, uh, doing different tasks. So here, let's just get us welcome. We can have the receptionist. Again, this is all customizable. This is all something that uh, you're, depending on what you're looking to offer to those end users, uh, you can make possible. So let's get us welcome and so we can continue with the tour. Hello there. How can I help? Yes, uh, we're here uh, for a tour with D10. Can we come in? Yeah, of course. Thanks for checking in. You're all set. Thank you. 
Uh, so just like that, now we have our receptionist on the sixth floor. So we no longer have receptionists on every floor here at Zoom. Uh, we now have a person that can be really anywhere in the world responsible for greeting, uh, for providing information, and for making sure that if there's somebody that needs to be escorted, that the person that they came here to visit uh, can now get called and go ahead and pick up that, uh, uh, that individual in order to walk him through campus. Now, this is again a kiosk, similar to what you saw there in the 27 inch display. This is now provisioned in a, new, in a whole different new, uh, uh, different unit up from D10. This is a D755 uh, inch uh, unit. Uh, as you can see, also receptionist mode can be done here. But here what we like to showcase is workspace reservation. This is more of a workspace management uh, application in order for people to reserve spaces uh, and for your institutions to understand who's reserving, who's going in and out, how the systems are used, everything as far as the assets, uh, everything you, how to gain that visibility, that intelligence as to how your real estate and your buildings and your rooms uh, are being utilized. Uh, we're seeing uh, institutions, again, making this available to students and to their end users uh, for reservations of rooms in their, in their libraries, uh, in their unions, so when the students need to do projects, they can all do self-serve uh, through either the, uh, right on the Zoom uh, client. So here, again, this is uh, the on-prem experience. Uh, you can, and your students can reserve their rooms and their spaces uh, all uh, through either through their desktop or their mobile um, experience. But here we're doing it on-prem. Uh, here we have a little a marker that says this is where you're at in relation to the, the floor. We can load all the images for the floor, load all the spaces that we want to make uh, available for reservation. Uh, we can also load pictures as to how the space looks, um, how many people can host. Uh, and if they had all other assets like printers, projectors, uh, all sorts of different, uh, uh, all sorts of different assets, all that can be listed here, so people can use that as filters uh, in, when they're looking for availability. Uh, we're also expanded the usability here, so if you have areas that are non-conventional, like parking spaces, you also have the ability to load your parking spaces and, and perhaps lockers, uh, so you can make those available to your um, uh, to your users. Now. I'm just come here at Zoom. I did not do. I did not do any reservations for any spaces, but I do need a desk that has a Zoom room in it in order for me to do my work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reserve it for about 45 minutes. Um, now it's presenting me with a QR code. Uh, all I have to do, just like we have done in the past with menus and the restaurants and things like that, I have to just open my camera. I hit the scan the QR code, hit reserve, and then now my avatar is positioned as to well, on that uh, space. It's not only reserving the space, but it's also reserving the technology in the space. Uh, so very, very powerful in order to, again, gain a, a visibility as to how everything in your institutions is being used and who's using it and for how long. So a lot of great things that can come from managing your devices so you don't have to replicate in order to create generic devices for people that are visiting or people that are just using sporadically. So here we are, uh, now we're ready to check in. This is again a Zoom room. Uh, this is uh, again on a D10 me, but this is provisioned in a whole different way. This is a full Zoom room on reservation. Uh, all we do now is uh, like we did before, I just open my camera. I scan the QR code, and then now my profile for Zoom is transferring into this device. So now my contacts, my phone number, uh, my meetings, it's asking me to set up a pin in case I need to get up, but I'm, we're not doing that obviously. And then now we have my calendar, I have my phone number, my profile, this is my system for the next 45 minutes. And then when I check out, then this becomes available uh, for somebody else uh, to use the device. Um, if I left a little early. So a lot of great things that, can, that, that we're hosting with uh, Workspace Reservation, a lot of different applications that we're seeing in education. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. It's just what floor, workflow and what you're looking to do in your own institutions when you're making a lot of these spaces available to the users. Uh, but just know that this is part of the Zoom Rooms functionality. This is no additional licensing that is needed. So if you have a Zoom room, that Zoom room will come with that functionality where you can create those maps and make sure that you put that as, a, as an asset uh, that, that can be made for reservation or not. Again, this is, this is all just part of the, uh, of the platform. This is not something that, that you need to activate. Now, here we have a huddle room. Again, very, very common spaces in, in educational institutions where we have the students ID8, where we have staff also uh, come together to do all sorts of different things. And what do we do in spaces like this and share spaces? We usually uh, do collaboration, obviously, in platforms like Zoom. Uh, we sometimes do uh, calling, telephone calling. We do whiteboarding, uh, as well as we do content share. So uh, this portion of the demo is we showcase what can we do 
with a Zoom room be on Zoom when we're not on Zoom. Um, here we have a D7 uh, X unit. It's a 55 inch display, so similar to the one in the lobby, but it's just a, it's just a newer model. Uh, and here, again, just all in one. Uh, from a room prep perspective, all we had to do was just mount a screen on the wall, and then there was nothing else that was needed in order to video enable this room for collaboration and everything else that we can do here. Like again, uh, we can do some whiteboarding. So here we have two experiences for whiteboarding. Uh, if you do the new experience, we, we have the ability to actually keep this as a living document in order to follow up with projects and make it available on the channel for the room. It's also where our, and, and this is something that if you're interested at a later time uh, and you want to take a, a, a deeper dive into what we can do with whiteboarding, uh, we can also integrate into your LMS system in order to do scheduling as well as keep all these different uh, files that have been created and all these different projects that have been created as part of the LMS experience on that particular dashboard. So they don't, your students don't have to go to Zoom. Your teachers don't have to go to Zoom to gain access to this. They can do that through the front end that they use day in and day out, which is their LMS. And you, you switch, so D2L, Canvas, Blackboard, uh, as long as it's got LTI, this is absolutely possible uh, within, those, uh, within those platforms. Now, or will be, this is, this is, this is immediate roadmap for the end of this month. So now, if I'm, if I'm a professor, uh, for example, a good friend of mine is a, is a uh, music teacher. Uh, we have a template in order to create actual you know, music. So we have a music sheet here uh, with the notes, and then we're just dragging and dropping, they can now create. When they're done, they can go ahead and save and send that over chat or send that uh, in a, or create a channel in order for the class to, again, keep ideating and keep editing. You do have the ability to create people that edit or as also people that just to view. So it really depends on what the owner of that particular project would like uh, the, the people that he's sharing or she's sharing with uh, to do with this particular unit. Now, if we just did this ad hoc like I did here, I came here, I built my musical sheet, uh, how do we save it? Same way that we did the reservation. The, uh, you know, our profile follows, you know, the profile is, uh, on our phone is going to allow us to, the minute we scan this QR code, the project and everything that we created immediately gets linked to our profile. So that can be made available as a project that we can edit and then we can make available to other folks uh, whenever needed. So let's go ahead and discard that. Uh, now, if we just wanted a regular little whiteboard, just a regular grease board, uh, this is just emulating your analog whiteboard that uh, you find in any room. Also all available here, um, you know, very limited in features, but you do have both uh, experiences depending on the type of user and depending on the application that you're looking to do. Now, what else can we do with a Zoom room? The, again, we just mentioned that you no longer need to mount all sorts of whiteboards in your rooms. This device can act as a whiteboard. Uh, if we wanted to make a telephone call, usually you have a collaboration system and a lot of people still put conference phones in the middle of a table, you know, making the experience non, they're really not cohesive. The two devices are not talking with each other, adds cost, adds complexity, and really just takes a lot of room from the, uh, from the actual table. But what if we can associate one Zoom room license to one of these D10 devices in order to do telephony? This D10 really becomes the largest speakerphone you'll ever own in your institution. Now you have a 10 digit dialer where you can just make a regular telephone call right off this uh, system with beautiful micro array and speakers uh, that are powering the entire experience. What else can we do? And this is one of my favorite ones. Um, we understand that even though we would love for you to remain in Zoom Island and to continue to work with Zoom, we know that in a lot of cases you are going to come across third party platforms that you need to interact uh, as a participant. This, just so you guys know, only as a participant. Uh, interoperability, uh, we have co-development uh, co agreements with Google, with Microsoft, and with Cisco in order for Zoom to join those platforms and for them to join our platform as well. So if somebody were to send a Teams invite or a Google Meet invite or a WebEx invite, we create that on the calendar of the, of the unit where we just put that join button and then that will be the extent of the uh, involvement with the, the users with those platforms or so they have to hit is join and immediately the Zoom room joins. But if they're just given a session ID, uh, somebody just calls you and says, hey, please join this uh, session ID for Google Meet. Uh, now with the shortcut buttons, which again, you can activate uh, whenever you like, um, you can go ahead and enter that meeting code, hit join, and then now you have the Zoom room takes that native WebRTC uh, a form uh, as a client and joins natively into those platforms. So really, really cool things. It really enables and just takes that, the whole experience to a whole new level. And then it answers the question as to how do we do, how do we support interoperability on Zoom? Now, 
Well, another thing, and probably the most common one of all, is how do we share content? A lot of times, in a lot of places, we have HDMI cables hanging off the side of the, of the screen, or perhaps we have to create infrastructure to run cables to the center of the table. Uh, so, but the experience is disjointed. Uh, it doesn't allow for multiple uh, users to, to share at the same time. Uh, so here what we did is we got rid of the HDMI cable and then through the Zoom client. So the Zoom client that you use today uh, with your friends, family, even in your schools, uh, what we can do if you, when you open the Zoom client here, you'll notice that there is a button here that says share screen. The share screen button is designed to work with Zoom rooms. And what we do when we press it, there's an ultrasonic beam that goes from this device to this device. They find each other and they shake hands. So let's go ahead and press it. Now, when these two devices shake hands and then it goes through the authentication process, so this worked really well because I'm on the same account as this device, so all your users internal to your institutions will be able to do this. For guests, there's options for the guests as well, and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but when we have now, when we're sharing content, now we have the content, we're doing our presentation. But remember, we have annotation capabilities with these devices. So if we have a science teacher, a history teacher, somebody that wants to make things more obvious uh, for those students or perhaps those that they're presenting to, we can now also open those annotation capabilities and then start annotating. Hey, where do I contact sales for uh, the guys at LinkedIn, uh, at, uh, at D10? There you go, contact sales. Uh, how do I deal with, you know, how, where do I type things for the bot? right here this is uh, you know how how to interact uh, with your screen and how to make things available uh, you know and make it more obvious for those uh, for those uh, participating in the meeting all possible uh, with the d10 product and zoom rooms remember we have not joined a zoom meeting just yet this is all local this is all things that are happening here this really becomes the media hub of your rooms and all we did is we just mounted a display on the wall that simple now let's go ahead and this. Being a very right. popular use case for students that have presentations that they want to show on the screen um, directly from their laptops or professors that may have created a lesson plan ahead of time and they want to bring it onto the screen without using a cable or a dongle or, you know, it's so easy to, to get, get it onto the larger screen in the room. Correct. Great, great, great uh, comment, uh, Jackson. Now. We also here on the right hand the side of the screen, on the top right hand corner, uh, we have a sharing key. So it is a six character code that for those that are not part of your network, for those that are not part of your account, uh, let's say if I went to one of your institutions and I wanted to share my presentation onto the screen, I can go ahead and open my screen, hit share screen, because I'm not part of your account, I'm going to be prompted to add the share to enter the share key so that way this system knows that I am in you know that I'm present in the room and that I want to share my screen here. Um, with that, again, because it's all cloud-based, I can share screen. So you and your institution and myself, we can all be sharing the same glass, we can all share the same screen. However, we're not writing on the same network. We're not creating a security posture uh, uh, threat to your network because you're trying to open the network for us to share or for other systems that are out there that need those uh, uh, network con configurations because it's all cloud-based. The minute I get access to, to that key, I can join LTE, guest access, whatever the case may be, and then start sharing on the same screen. So really, really cool, very reliable, extremely stable, uh, and better yet, it's on the cloud. Now. Philippe, we had a question uh, that just came in, actually. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, for the sharing content for that proximity share we looked at a second ago, does both the laptop and the D7X have to be on the same network? So it, it, it works a lot faster when they're both in the, in the same network, but to my comment, uh, to my last comment, no. So if you have, uh, if you have the ability to, uh, uh, if you have the ability to connect to any network, because this is all cloud-based, the minute you add this uh, key, it takes you to the cloud-based uh, 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 sharing session uh, in order for you to share. But, so no, absolutely not. You don't have to be in the same network in order to share content. Now, other, you know, another question that follows, I'm in, in not sure if, if, if that question is in there, is do I need to have the Zoom client loaded in my laptop? And the answer is no. So obviously, it's, it works very seamlessly when you have the, the client. Um, I'll be pressed to see how many, you know, how many people don't have Zoom on their laptops given the last three years that we've had and the amount of usage that we've had. But let's say there's people out there that don't have the Zoom client, don't want to load the Zoom client in their laptops. Uh, we have the ability to actually you know, share content 
um, just uh, through a browser. So if you have somebody that goes into your institution and they want to share content and then they don't have the, the ability to do that uh, on their uh, they don't have the application, they can just go share.zoom.us, they enter the meeting ID, the passcode, and then immediately will start replicating their screen uh, right on, the, on, on one of these devices. So a lot of flexibility that you get. And again, lowest common denominator. These devices can take actually uh, uh, for you to input a, a physical input. So if you need to physically connect to a laptop, you can also allow to do that. Now, let's go ahead and join this call. Let's go ahead and see, uh, again, the workflow is exactly the same. That's the benefit of this. So, uh, but we do have people perhaps for ADA that, that need some ADA assistance uh, or perhaps just don't want to interact with the touch display with a public touch screen. Uh, so we can use voice commands to actually launch this call. So because it is scheduled, uh, we can now tell this device to uh, go ahead and dial in. So it can say, hello, Zoom, join meeting. Do you want to join the meeting? Yes. Starting the meeting. And guys, now we have joined this meeting. Uh, we are now part of this webinar on the Zoom room. And then as a participant, as a panelist, I can now uh, do all the things that I was doing when we were not on Zoom, right? So as you probably have seen, some of you have seen that in the past with some collaboration platforms, the workflow changed dramatically from what you were doing on-prem. Um, and it was very, very different as to how things work when you had to engage a collaboration platform, maybe one of those legacy collaboration platforms. But here, whether you're doing this here locally on on-prem or you're doing it on Zoom, the workflow is exactly the same, which really allows you to flatten that learning curve uh, with your users and really you know make sure that the training is easy and very very streamlined so for example if i wanted to do a whiteboard and i'm just going to do the classic experience uh, i can just go ahead and start writing and we can all start sharing now because this canvas is on the cloud and this canvas is part of this session, if Jackson or Scott wanted to go ahead and start writing, uh, they can go ahead and engage. So now we become more inclusive uh, of those participants that can have, perhaps cannot be uh, part of the session, but they now can use this beautiful whiteboard in order for us to ideate uh, regardless of where they're at the, you know, geographically. So this is where you can extend reach to students that may be in rural areas uh, that cannot come to, to your classes uh, physically, but they can now not only come to your classes and listen to the lecture, but they can now participate for math problems, science, whatever the case may be, it's all possible there. Let me go ahead and close. Um, now, what else can we do, right? So just like we did with short content, you know, when we were here locally, uh, we can also just go and open the Zoom client again and then hit this share button. Then these two devices will shake hands. And then now you guys are going to see my screen. Now I'm replicating the screen uh, to the webinar. You guys can see what I'm presenting. We have the D10 page here. And just like we did earlier, right? We have the annotation tools available to us. Uh, where can we contact Jackson and Scott? Here, contact sales. Uh, I have. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more about the solutions that D10 offers. Uh, anything and everything you can make more obvious uh, by just having the ability to annotate, as well as anybody on the session can go ahead uh, and also annotate right on the on the content and make sure that again that this becomes a collaborative experience. That the hybrid is actually hybrid. That if th those tools that are available for us on prem are the same tools that are available for those that are in the in the virtual space. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. So with that, um, if you guys have any questions, please put them on the questions and answers. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the hallways of Zoom again, and then uh, show you a few more things that we're doing with D10 and with uh, our new firmware rev, uh, which is 5.15, which was jam packed with new features guys. So we're very, very excited about this. Excellent. All right. Thank you, all right, Jackson, so hitting the hallways here at Zoom, um, one thing that we have here is uh, this is an open workspace, right? And we see this a lot in schools where they want to video enable gyms, uh, perhaps they're doing some, uh, uh, some town halls, things of that nature where things can get really noisy um, and things can get a little chaotic. And, and again, video, may, you know, perhaps it's not, it's not, it, those environments are not conducive of video uh, solutions by, by any stretch. But with some of the new AI uh, uh, noise suppression uh, features that we have introduced in the, la in the latest rev, uh, we can do quite a few things. So just so you guys see, so I'm not, uh, so you guys don't think that, you know, that this is not working here. I have, you know, silverware, perhaps I'm steering my coffee and I'm making a lot of noise. The mic that is on my lapel is the one capturing all the sound. But let me go ahead and launch the call to, so you guys can see what's possible with the, now, the noise suppression systems along with the audio system built in within this D10.
Recording in. All right, guys. So now you guys are seeing me on this open workspace. Again, this space can get a little busy when we have all the Zoomies uh, doing their work. Uh, we have my cameraman here, Ed. Um, so one of the things is that with AI, we can now recognize, and the AI has been extremely helpful into the collaboration space because it can really do a lot for us when we're doing video in production rules, as well as audio mitigation um, and how we can suppress a lot of foreign noises that perhaps uh, are not conducive of a good meeting. So for example, if I'm speaking, and you guys will probably hear the first couple of milliseconds as the AI kind of grabs on and starts learning what's happening. But if I start stirring my coffee, I can st keep speaking, but then those sounds, most you know, they're not making it through because now what's happening is this, this device is capturing the sound. The AI within Zoom is identified as something that is not human speech and it's filtering it filtering it out so that way you guys uh, don't have to deal uh, with those disruptions. Here, obviously we can hear it, uh, but for you guys, uh, those sounds should be you know, minimized or perhaps eliminated uh, completely. So we're very excited about this. Again, this is something that with your D10 device, you can do, uh, you can use it along with the AI uh, built in within Zoom. And it's, brand, it's a brand new feature. So there's a lot more development coming for that. As you guys can see, Ed right behind me is shaking his keys. Um, we, again, it's, it's hard to concentrate when you're doing that, but then, <laughs> but as you guys can see, uh, you guys can can probably hear those keys, but uh, but it is it is it is prioritizing on, on the human speech in order to get that done, in order to get to get a really effective meeting happening. So as you guys see, for you guys it's great for me not so much, but uh, at the end of the day I'm aware that these uh, noises are happening. Let me go ahead and hang up and then continue with the call. Pretty amazing. Uh, we could we couldn't hear the the keys at all on on our end. At least I couldn't. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. This is uh, on the brand new release 5.15. And if you guys have Zoom Rooms already or are interested in Zoom Rooms, please ask us about the 5.15. It was jam-packed with awesome AI features in order to do uh, production rules for audio, video, uh, all sorts of crazy things with multi-cameras and multi-displays. So incredible, incredible. The whole idea is to really mi minimize that AV stack that can get to five, seven feet in racks uh, to just one of these devices where uh, the experience is far more cohesive, it's far easier because a lot of that AV functionality is in the cloud. And uh, like I said, all you need is either to mount one of these guys on the wall, put it on a cart, your choice, right? A desktop, whatever the case may be. Uh, one of the things that we do here at Zoom is that we do digital signage. One Zoom room license gets you a quarter million uh, digital sign uh, licenses, uh, which you can deploy across your institutions however you like to do it. You need a player and a display, or perhaps a, uh, a, a D10 device acting as a digital sign, like you guys can see here. This is a D10 me uh, acting as a digital sign. Uh, again, 30 frames per second, uh, you can, uh, 30 frames per second video, presentations, uh, whatever the case, you know, whatever you would like to load in there, you can do that. If you have Zoom phone, the E911 and emergency notification um, uh, 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 capabilities uh, using digital science as an asset, is they're incredible. So definitely would love to, you know, for, for you guys to give us the opportunity to show you what's possible as you're looking to modernize not only your telephone systems, your collaboration uh, environment, uh, but really bring everything up to uh, compliance when you're looking about emergency emergency notification and how you do your E911 uh, you know, uh, capabilities within your institutions. With that here, uh, we decided also on Zoom, we have a lot of reporting, a lot of analytics that are, uh, that are gathered by, uh, again, a lot, you know, with, through AI on our platforms where we're really just grabbing everything and how, your, how the cloud is behaving and how your system is behaving uh, in your enterprise. And then we're able to actually create those reports and create them, put them as modules that you can assign to a digital sign. So this is exactly what we did here. We took the analytics for our call center uh, analytics. As you can see, not much going on on that, but we just decided to take care of that module. We paired it with a digital sign, and then we put it on a D10 unit that as an admin, as somebody that is administrating this environment, at a glance, I can take a look as to what's happening with my call center. Uh, and then if I wanted to use this as a system, all I have to do is just touch it. Uh, and then now I have a full blown Zoom room uh, that I can use also as a video conferencing system. And same thing here, right? So this is more of a personal unit. It's acting, is doing uh, digital signage, but then when I wake it up, uh, it now becomes a, a Zoom room that is uh, ready to be reserved. So a lot of great things. And again, you can have your messaging and perhaps instructions as to how to interact with the systems if that's relevant in your institution. So a lot of cool things. And again, guys, we're just showing you a very brief 
uh, description as to what you know what we can do with the uh, the, the devices. Uh, the product's extremely malleable, so it fits a lot of different workflows in a lot of different applications uh, that you're looking to uh, that you're looking to address and perhaps cater to those specific users within your institutions for hybrid learning, for collaboration, uh, or just for regular you know just for regular admin um, you know uh, 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 functions. Yep. So, I go ahead. I was going to say uh, that last uh, last. I guess in the last webinar we had last month, we talked to the University of Chicago. One of the things that they were struggling with a little bit is getting faculty to really adopt the technology. So using that digital signage function, um, you mentioned it's instructions on how to get online is an excellent use because it makes it very easy to just walk up the device. You might have two or three lines of instruction on there. Just tap to get started, You know, invite your contacts, launch a webinar. And, or launch a whiteboard and save the whiteboard and share it with students, right? Just a, a few lines of instruction can really help bridge that gap so that folks then walk into the room, they don't feel intimidated by the technology. Yep, yeah, thank you, Jackson. So here we are, this is our classroom. Uh, just for reference, this room is about 40 by 40, so it's a good size space. Uh, as a professor, uh, we like to, you know, professors like to interact uh, with their students, whether they're in the hybrid world or here on-prem. And a lot of them don't want to deal with technology, right? A lot of them say, I came here to teach. I don't want to learn anything new. And that's exactly why we kept it very, very simple uh, with a D10, a D7X, 75 inch. Uh, this device, uh, the reason why we placed it like this, actually we borrowed uh, this particular com room configuration uh, from one of us more successful hybrid learning uh, environments or hybrid learning institutions in the country that uses thousands and thousands, or I shouldn't say thousands, hundreds of thousands of minutes of Zoom rooms a month um, uh, teaching and interacting uh, with, in their own environments. And the reason why they, they, they're so successful and they have deployed so many is because, again, to my comment before, they kept it very simple. What they did is they brought one of these uh, D7s, they placed it at a 45 degree angle in order to leverage the 120 degree field of view of that camera. And then instead of just me just talking about it, let's just go ahead and join. So now, guys, you guys now see uh, this room. And then as a professor, uh, I'm able to now uh, use the mics that are built in into the, into the unit. I'm able to use the cameras that are built in within this uh, device. Uh, and then if I want to interact with my students here, so I have uh, student Ed and our CEO, Eric. I'm training Eric here. Uh, I can move around, but I can still keep track as to what's happening in the virtual space. I can see my gallery. I can see chat. I can see transcription if I wanted to. So a lot of different things that we can do uh, from my room layout. Now, you notice that there's two screens, that there are two vantage points in here. And then again, that's one of the excitement pieces that we have with Zoom Rooms on 5.15 that we just released is the fact that we can add a second camera on the cloud. So no physical connectivity, no additional hardware or EV infrastructure to enable a second camera that can be really placed anywhere in the room uh, where I can just go in here. And if I move as a teacher, I can start speaking to my to my uh, students and then I have the, the uh, my teachers here. Now I can also open uh, my whiteboard and start the, the whiteboard session directly from here. And then as you can see, Scott and Jackson are now interacting uh, with the white canvas. Now, if I decided to use a template, uh, we can do that. So a lot of great things uh, that we can do in order to ideate and create and make the folks here that are on-prem with those that are virtual to really share and compare uh, and present together uh, regardless uh, of where they're at, if they're virtual or if they are, um, uh, or if they're here, or if they're in, in, on Zoom. So now let's go ahead and uh, close that, uh, close that. Let me show you guys here one thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard that. So again, now as a professor, I'm moving around, right? Uh, my sound is being captured. I don't really have any lapel mics or additional AV infrastructure. I don't have any more cameras. All we did is we just wheeled in two D10 devices. This is a D10 75 inch, the one that you guys are looking here. And this is a D10 55 inch device that both synced on the cloud and that not, now they're both talking as if they were one AV system. And then again, all we did is we just wheeled them in and we just let the power of the cloud do that. Uh, for those of you that have been doing this for a while, uh, I was very impressed. I think uh, the, the fact that we are putting AV on the cloud is really going to take things to a whole new level. And the simplification as to how a room like this can work is incredible. Now, you guys may ask, what, what happens if the professor has a really deep space? So let's just go about 40 feet away 
uh, from the ro you know from the actual mice and from the system. So I'm now about 40 feet away. Um, and I, again, I don't have any other mic than the one built in into the, this device and it's capturing me. You guys can hear me okay. Um, and again, we are not telling the professor to complicate things in order to go to a user interface all the time to change. Uh, we're just asking that professor to just mine the gallery for, in case there are questions uh, from those uh, remote participants. But other than that, they can lecture as they were, as they did in the past. Now, one thing that people ask us, what happens with the traditional tools that we use in our classrooms, right? So can we integrate uh, tools like a document camera uh, or, or uh, you know, a, a microscope as long as it's got a video output? And the answer is absolutely yes. In the past, you probably needed to create some sort of special program or a little panel to change those sources and things like that. With Zoom Rooms, we can actually integrate those natively. The minute you connect, the Zoom Room becomes aware that this is a source, that this is an input that he needs to handle. So let's say if I have a document camera as a professor, I want to show a physical piece of media. I don't have a digital presentation or anything like that, like a PowerPoint. I actually have something physical that I need to show my students. I can connect it, you know, just plug and play. I can just hit share content and I can just share to the meeting. And as you guys can see, I can now have this little piece of silicone here on this document camera that we use in this room. And I can now share this, what's happening with this uh, little, um, you know, this little circuit here. Now, if I had perhaps a, a map of the world, let's go ahead and zoom out a, a little bit. And then let's go ahead and out of focus. Now we can go through a geography session here live with a physical, you know, with a physical globe. We can now show this physical, uh, to, to, but remember, this is a very small piece of media, right? This is a very small little globe that if I'm sharing with my students here, uh, it's going to be difficult for them to convey. But when I'm using the 75 inch display along with the power of this document camera, we can now have a very, very effective uh, in meeting in a very effective class because now we have the tools to do it and we didn't have to break the bank at all. We just, like, like I said, we just bought it, put it on a cart, rolled it in, connected it to the network, whether on Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and we're ready to roll. So with that, guys, uh, go ahead. Uh, also, you know, for those of you that perhaps if the teacher's remote um, and for those that wanted to, um, uh, for, for a more immersive view of the space, we can also uh, capabilities where we can create additional uh, quadrants in the gallery. And then now you can see a lot of the participants uh, in their own the, in their own quadrants. And so you, we can start getting framed individually. Um, again, those are all things that we can do on the cloud and that are possible uh, with D10 and Zoom Rooms uh, when we're doing this in the Zoom meeting. So as you can see here is, is reorganizing how the, how, the, uh, how the participants are laid out. Um, obviously, in, in some cases, we're going to have some overlap because it's a little crowded. Uh, but even though, you know, let's say if the teacher is remote, uh, they can now see that the, those participants front and center and they can interact with them. Now, um, any questions on this, guys? So How we're now question? looking at Zoom Room Smart Gallery. Is that correct? This is Smart Gallery on Zoom and it's powered by D10, correct? And this is included in uh, Zoom Room's license. You don't have to pay any extra for this. Nothing. Everything that you guys saw here on, on this tour is all included in the Zoom Room license. There's no additional licensings or services or anything like that. Everything that you see here is 100% included. Yeah. And the, when you added the extra um, camera in the room initially, right, that was that was connecting through the cloud, did it require its own Zoom Rooms license? How did it no. talk to the, it only, the primary? It only leverages one Zoom Room license. Uh, it obviously a second D10, uh, D10, D7 unit in order to power the whiteboard, uh, the display, because the, you know, the display can also become a, con a secondary content display, and then obviously the camera. So we keep developing in order for you to get more out of your systems. And, and for those rooms that need that additional AV capability, perhaps permanently, but you don't have the, the wiring and the infrastructure to do it, just know that now the cloud can do this for you. Uh, or if you just need to do it ad hoc, right? If you don't need a secondary camera or if the room is not outfitted with video all the time, but you need to do it here and there, just know that two D10 systems that you wheel in uh, will accomplish that for you, no problem. And you're, seeing, you're witnessing it here. So let me go ahead and deactivate the Smart Gallery. Well, real, we have, real quick, Philippe. Go ahead. Uh, real quick before you do that. Uh, oh. you know, one one advantage of everyone being here, right, uh, is, is Zoom HQ is going to have the latest and greatest. And and one thing that is on that 75 inch is our View Pro, and that is the camera array, right, which was helping drive that smart gallery experience. And one thing that happened when Ed slid over to the left a little bit 
that far field camera grabbed Taylor Swift, brought her into the gallery. She's what, 30 feet away from, from the from the system, right? About, mm -hmm. like that. That's about yeah. right, Scott, yes. You know, and, and we had the same image of her uh, as we did our friends in the front without any distortion, right? And I think that's really powerful in delivering that really clean, smart gallery experience, not just from width, but also depth in a classroom, right? So you can pull off a large area uh, and really have that meeting equity that I think a lot of people are looking for without the distortion, right? There's no grainy shots mixed in with clear shots. Uh, it's, it's really a nice, even experience uh, for us being remote, seeing everyone so clearly, regardless of where they are. Guys, uh, to those on uh, uh, participating in this webinar, we just want to make sure that you guys know the AV experience no longer has to be complicated or expensive or hard to support. This is easy now. This is the cloud. All these things are pre-baked, ready for you to, to, to roll them out. Um, if you like some features, go ahead and activate them. If you don't like them or you try them out and it's not what you expected, you can, you can go ahead and turn them off. Uh, this is not no longer requiring custom programming. This is no longer requiring a set of uh, a, a boots on the ground trying to install things. These are literally just displays that we roll in and then we just either put them on the field and they the power of the cloud it just gets you everything you need. If it's, it's a TV on a cart, <laughs> it doesn't get any easier than it's, it's an instantaneous installation. Yep, yep. You guys can get this done in, 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 in a few minutes. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jackson and Scott. Uh, to all of you, thank you so much for the opportunity to present to you. We're really looking, looking forward to working with your team. Uh, please reach out to Scott and, and, and Jackson with your questions and, and additional follow-up. Uh, like I said, we're here to help. We are, guys are always welcome here at uh, uh, headquarters. Let me go ahead and mute. And any questions, uh, Jackson, in the meantime, I'll, I'll be on. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and move to a room in case there are questions for me. Excellent. Thank you. Well, Scott mentioned this a minute ago, and you're seeing it right now in the Zoom Experience Tour feed. So that's a D7X with the View Pro cameras on the sides. Uh, you can see them just hanging off the sides. It looks like little ears on the side of the, of the display. Um, and the form factor really doesn't do justice to the actual power that's in these um, side cameras. So it's called D10 View Pro. And what it is is two additional cameras that you can um, easily slide onto the D7X systems, whether it's the 55 or the 75 system. Um, there's a socket on the back of the D7X. If any of you have one right now, there's likely a socket there. Um, if you have one of the older units, the, the View Pro comes with a very easy to mount little socket that plugs right in. So um, this really enables that experience that we saw a minute ago where the smart gallery system is picking out folks at 30 feet away, 15 feet away, 40 feet away, framing them in their own quadrants, giving everybody equal seating within the meeting. Um, and we're really talking about we're talking about meeting equity here right now. We're talking about folks that are at home, faculty that um, might be in the classroom, want to engage with students, make the students feel like they're actually in the room having true eye-to-eye -eye, um, experiences as if they were in the classroom, right? Rather than looking at some um, point of view that might feel a little bit unnatural, this is really that natural like eye-to-eye -eye meeting experience. You really can't get any other way. So that's D10 View Pro. Um, it's, it's available now, um, definitely check in on that if, if you're interested. Here's a little bit more about the way that it covers these spaces. Um, what's really cool about View Pro as well, as I mentioned this at the top of the webinar, this allows you to, to cover spaces that are very wide or very narrow, very large, very short, right? Because it has four cameras. Um, I think you saw it there in that previous slide. You can see each side has two additional cameras, has a wide and a narrow. Um, it just gives you a tremendous amount of versatility there. So D10 View Pro, definitely check that out. If you have any questions um, about View Pro, you can follow up with either of us after the webinar uh, or check in with your, your D10 rep. Um, we saw onboard uh, briefly in a couple of sections here. This is really where if you want to add that secondary whiteboarding display, if you want to have um, a space just for additional collaboration space, just for spaces for students that are tuning in remotely so they um, also have presence in the room, the onboard is an excellent uh, solution for adding that companion. Um, we talked about the Mi Pro. I'm going to jump through this for uh, just for time. Um, one thing we didn't really talk about a whole lot is D10 Orbit. Paired with Zoom Device Manager, ZDM, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, this really allows you that very convenient way to remotely maintain all of your D10 devices from a single cloud-based dashboard. So you can have one IT administrator 
maintaining, remotely repairing, checking health status, and assigning licenses to your entire fleet of D10 devices. Um, in the last webinar, we talked to the University of Chicago. This is a huge part of their ability to maintain multiple campuses with a very small faculty or a small um, IT overhead. So D10 Orbit, um, you know, this is something we can't really talk about enough, really. It's, it's an amazing feature. It comes free with all of your D10 devices. There are paid uh, plans on top of it, too, if you want to leverage the power of D10 support team. You can actually use D10 support team to remotely go in, manage, um, and maintain your devices for you. So if you're interested, definitely check out D10 Orbit. Uh, just to recap before we jump into um, just remaining Q&A questions, we saw the D7X. This was the, the dis display that Philippe was showing you, uh, the one touch to start whiteboarding, jumping into meetings. You saw a direct guest join where we were joining a, a Google Meet call. You saw the whiteboarding, of course, both the classic and the new uh, Zoom whiteboard, which is super powerful. This comes both in Android and Windows operating systems. The D7X Dual 75, we didn't really talk about a whole lot right now. This is a brand new system for us. It has a camera in the middle of the device, which is very unique. Keep an eye out for that. Um, and lastly, I just want to talk about the D10 Mate in the bottom right. You see that there. That's a 10-inch tablet. It allows you to put the controller for the room at the tabletop. So if you uh, want to be able to control the meeting room without having to walk up to the board, you can do it directly from the table. Adds convenience, adds a little bit more flexibility to the room. That's uh, a very easy to use uh, solution for exactly that. So with that, Scott, um, you want to talk a little bit more about the Engage program? I'll talk about, I think we're having some technical, technical difficulties here at the end of the webinar. So um, we created the Engage program as a very easy way for you to get uh, your hands on a D10 device. So this is something that we've developed directly with Zoom. It um, allows you to get a test drive of any D10 solution that you saw in the webinar today, whether it's the D7X, D10 Me Pro, the D10 Onboard. If you want to see just the D10 Mate in your space, if you already have any other Zoom Rooms um, devices, the Engage program lets you do that. So if you're interested in a free trial today, also um, this is something, as I mentioned, we developed directly with Zoom. Uh, where we'll throw you a Zoom Rooms license to try the solution. So you don't have to worry about buying a Zoom Rooms license just to try the D10 device. It's, it's all inclusive. So there's a QR code there on the left. Um, if you scan that with your phone, there's a, a short form. We just need to know a couple of details about you and your organization. Um, and then we'll, we'll follow up right away and get you set up with the D10 solution for your space. So with that, um, a couple of questions I want to address really quickly before we hop off, just in the interest of everybody's time. Great question from Mark. Uh, what is the difference between Orbit and ZDM? I'm glad you asked. So ZDM is Zoom's device management. This is where you can set up your digital signage. This is where you can set up your uh, workspace reservation maps. This is really your, your cloud-based um, management program for all things Zoom and Zoom Rooms. Orbit is something that comes from D10. This is more specific to the actual D10 devices, where we're talking specifically about your maintenance uh, management and, if needed, any remote repair of your D10 solution specifically. They work in tandem with each other. Um, you know, most folks that use them use both, so they're they're just using different ways. They don't. There's really very little overlap, if any. So they're not designed to replace each other. There are things on Orbit you can't do with ZDM, and there are many things on ZDM you can't do with Orbit. So you want to use them in conjunction with each other. Jackson, I would like to, to, to add to that. So Orbit really gives you a deeper, a, a more in-depth uh, management of your D10 devices at a hardware level. So everything that has to do with the hardware. Uh, ZDM is all about Zoom. However, we do have some visibility and the ability to update the hardware and interact with the hardware to a degree. Uh, but if you need that more, uh, that, that deeper, you know, level of management and perhaps visibility, again, at the hardware level, uh, thing, you know, things that perhaps ZDM doesn't support at that point, uh, then you can go to Orbit. Um, for the most part, again, they complement each other, but you can do quite a bit, uh, you know, from ZDM, and, you know, to do Orbit, and that's the integration and the value that we bring uh, in that uh, DTEM brings in the relationship is that we collaborate and they give us visibility to, to their hardware. We can do some things at that level. And then, you know, if for some of those things that have to, that are unique to D10, then you go to Orbit. So uh, again, from a management perspective, it, 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 it's incredible some of the things that you can do. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for that. No, absolutely. Um, you know, 
both really are, are such powerful programs. So, so definitely check out both of them. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is D10 Mate. Um, Mark, another great question. Is D10 Mate uh, compatible with the Windows D7X? Absolutely it is. The, the, the D10 Mate, uh, although it runs Android operating system, the D7X is available with both Windows or Android. Um, the, the Mate joins the Zoom Rooms client. It doesn't necessarily join the D7X. So you can use the D10 Mate with a non-D10 solution. So if you have um, a neat board, if you have a Logitech bar as well, um, you know, really any other certified Zoom Rooms device will actively pair with the room that the D10 Mate is also connected to. So it's a very easy way to use. One thing is worth noting, uh, especially D10 brings a lot of value uh, into this in, in this aspect is that if you have a Zoom room or existing Zoom rooms that are perhaps from third party brands other than D10, and you would like to add the companion uh, Zoom room where you have the camera, the whiteboard, uh, the, the, uh, the display, and you want to do this all on the cloud like we showcased in that other room, uh, again, you can buy a D10, pair it to that third-party brand, and then uh, just have that dual uh, Zoom room collaboration there. Um, you know, with that, uh, again, the, this holy war uh, that perhaps some of you have experienced in the past, where if you went with one brand for a platform, you had to stick to the, their hardware and the, in that brand for the rest of the existence of, the, of that system, that's no longer the case with Zoom because we are a hardware manufacturer a software, uh, because we're a software provider, uh, we can work with manufacturers like D10 to, again, load the, the software into their devices, and then everything operates the same way regardless uh, of the brand. Here, obviously, D10 uh, gives us the flexibility to have everything contained within the same chassis and the same screen, uh, and then we can do a lot of special things. So from D10 Mate to the D7 to the onboard, uh, all of these devices can act as Zoom Room uh, for the D7s or can complement to existing Zoom Rooms or to uh, installations where you're looking to, again, do whiteboarding and perhaps companion whiteboard in a more streamlined manner. Awesome. And Philippe, when you were um, walking through the space that had the companion camera um, that was connecting over the cloud, there's mm -hmm. a question from Tim Hines who was asking, uh, is it connecting via its IP? No. No, it, it registers. It, re, it, it registers through the Zoom room. Uh, again, it's all cloud. It's all at the cloud level. So they find each other on the cloud, and then now the primary Zoom room in that space is controlling that as a device. But again, it's not. It's not. There's no physical connections. There's no network connections between the two of them. Uh, it's all happening at, at, at the cloud. So like, it, it's very easy. Today is a one-to-one -one relationship where it, that room has to be paired uh, to that device. If this is not roadmap and it's not nothing's committed, guys. But the thought process here that we're that we're that things that we're thinking about is that we would like to have these Zoom rooms and these companion Zoom rooms where you can have your D10 devices just there on demand. That if somebody needs it or reserves it, they can just wheel it in into any room, hit sync with the the room that's in that with that Zoom room that's in that space, and then make it available on demand. So uh, a lot of cool things. You know, the good thing here at Zoom is that we live in dog years from a development perspective. We keep developing new features and new capabilities pretty much every month, uh, every week. It's, it's, it's crazy to keep up. Uh, but things like this, to be able to do AV over the cloud, uh, it's incredible. Right? I come from the legacy AV background, and just what I'm witnessing here at Zoom is just I, I, my mind is always blown here. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, one last question before we pop off here. Thank you guys for sticking around for another couple of minutes. Um, can Zoom and D10 sync to 25 Live? I understand that's a scheduling app. Yep. Um, yeah, Philippe, yep. are you familiar with that? Okay, great. So that integration has that integration exists today. Uh, so with 25 Live for mass calendaring, and really depends on what you have with 25 Live. So if you have 25 Live to schedule some of your spaces, uh, there is integration into 25 Live to do that. However, uh, there is also the possibility if you have 25 Live uh, with an LTI integration into your LMS, just know that. That, that second layer, you can also integrate Zoom rooms into your LMS and then from there get, get visibility into 25 Live where you can start the scheduling uh, on 25 Live that goes to your LMS and from your LMS it goes into your Zoom room uh, and then you can manage everything either from 25 Live or if you need to make changes and fly through the LMS, you can do that. We can take a deeper dive. We just did this in like 20 seconds. It's a discussion that merits about an hour. So let us know how you would like to see what we can do with 25 Live. It's actually our, the first mass scheduling platform that that has some integrations with us. So we would love to uh, we would love to uh, you know have that that, that deeper dive uh, in in how we can do that. Excellent. 
But with that, uh, Philippe, thank you so much. And thank you to the Zoom Virtual Tours team. You guys did an amazing job. And thank you, of course, to everybody who tuned in um, and stuck it out till 11.03 uh, Pacific. So thank you guys. Have a fantastic day. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.